Welcome back to American Made. My name is Justin. I'm from Zealous Manufacturing. So on this episode, we're going to introduce a new product Zealous Manufacturing is launching. And then we're going to kind of do a mini series. So we're going to go over the design, some of the aspects of that. And then each item of the assembly will have its own other mini episode. So the item that we're going to be doing, I don't know if you guys can see that well, is a little uh, air compressor stand. So this is for the air ride community in the automotive scene. So there's a top piece, middle standoff, and the bottom. So we're gonna go over each item in its own individual video. But in this video, we're gonna go over the design and then some of the things we did to incorporate uh, modularity, different items we can do to change this design easily, and then some of the things to think about when you're designing a product from scratch. So come with us, we're gonna do start to finish on product design, manufacturing, launch, and then selling of this product as a Zealous Manufacturing product. So on today's episode of American Made, we're gonna do the first of a mini series on design to finish product um, of a product that Zealous Manufacturing is launching. So this is a automotive application. This will house a small air compressor, not house really, it's a stand for one, kind of an aesthetic piece. So let's get into it. So this is a three piece design. Um, one thing I always encourage people to think about is what is going to be the easiest to assemble and what is going to make um, the most that you can change. So what I mean by that, um, if you notice here in the three pieces, right? So uh, the top piece that the compressor bolts to, the middle standoff and the base. So the base uh, is pretty simple. It's got threaded holes that will allow studs. We will sell it with studs or bolts. Uh, and then there'll be a little drill template for the customer to install. Um, and then the standoff. This is the big piece. Roll this a little bit uh, better angle for you guys. So this piece puts this at a 10 degree angle. So this surface to this surface is at 10 degrees. Um, and that's just a nice display angle for the product. So if somebody came to me and says, I'd like to order 50 of these units, but I need 20 degrees or I'd like them flat, all I have to do is make one piece. Um, so some people have asked or thought maybe you should make all this out of one piece. It's doable, um, but I think this will give me the most uh, modular assembly uh, without getting overly complicated. So two tap holes here, two tap holes there, that is all assembled. And then uh, the top plate. So the top plate just has two flat heads that will assemble it there. So that is the overall quick modular concept here to make the design what it is. Now let's go into some of the features that are kind of overlooked. Um, so if you notice here, these are not threaded. These are through holes. And the only reason I did that is if somebody installs these and is at an odd angle, or they're not overly familiar with aluminum and you know some things, you don't have to worry about these stripping out. So um, these will be shipped assembled besides this item. So um, the item that bolts to this comes with a little vibration isolation mount. Um, and those normally thread in. So this will actually replace it. You can just, we'll provide a new nut and bolt. So you can bolt through the top, put a nut on the bottom, and then you don't have to worry about stripping these holes out. If you strip these holes out, right, this is all kind of junk. Um, but again, the way you see this item here, this is what the customer will receive assembled. So we here at Zealous Manufacturing, or I, will do all the assembly here. So I will know these holes are good um, and that that is all assembled properly. So that is one feature that I thought of here. The radius is a eighth inch radius. I did this for two reasons. Um, one, it's a very standard size. I think it looks good. It also matches the radius down here. Um, but I also did that so you could run a standard corner rounder. I did not make the prototypes with the corner rounder. Um, for production, I may or may not. 
but just something that I thought about. So let's say long term, I have to send this to another company. Uh, I went with the standard size, so they don't have to worry about going in with a ball. They could go in with a corner rounder if that's what they chose. Um, not a custom tool or anything, it's a very standard size. Same thing with all of these internal radiuses, they're all very standard sizes, so it's not like you need to go in with a special size. Um, and you can do a cleanup pass or a spring pass on all the features with standard tooling. So that was another thought. In another episode, I'll actually go through the machining of each item and how I tackled that. Um, so those will be in future episodes, but I just wanted to go through some of the things to think about in design wise. So if you also notice a lot of the features, right? Flat surfaces, flat surfaces are always nice. It's easy to hold on. Um, and that's kind of how I like to do things. So the one item that was, I'll be honest, I overthought this way too much. How to hold this and get these holes perpendicular here. So I thought, uh, maybe I'll machine all of this, thread mill these, then maybe I'll make a fixture that holds the whole item at 10 degrees and then clamp that. Um, shout out to Pat, uh, Job Shopper. Uh, he came up with a, I kind of said, I think I'm overthinking this. So all I did was I made a soft jaw, one side past center line. Uh, so if you look past center line, so when I actually do this, I just use a flat jaw on the other side to come in. Um, and then I don't have to worry about it tipping, it can't fall down because I'm past center, way past center actually on this. So, um, and then a feature we added here was uh, X, Y, and Z. So, right, you can imagine there's gonna be a top hat on here. So where do you pick up off of? So I just said, this is my Z depth, I know this, my, you know, in this case, Y, and then uh, X will be here. We actually ended up tweaking that in the prototype. So this is still my Z depth. Um, and then I just picked up right off this back surface because I know my item is touching that. So I know that machine surface is physically there. And then I just went off the side of the jaw. Um, all of these jaws, I buy my soft jaws. So I know they're pretty accurate um, from everything I've used and experienced. So. That was really good. And while I have this, one thing I want to note, and actually here you guys can see this. This was the idea I had. I was gonna use some flat heads, bolt it in, and then um, you can't see it in this view easily, but this would hold this at 10 degrees or perfectly, perfectly flat. So I could just deck it off, drill and tap and be fine, and then I had a little artificial hole to pick up off of. It worked for one or two pieces, um, but long-term production, this did not pan out. So uh, we dumped that, um, and then we actually just used this soft jaw. So the one thing I wanna highlight while I have this shown is anytime you can have everything in one file, it's always easier. Um, if you can see here in my model tree, these are all joints, so all of the items were done individually and then assembled. So see if I can show that, right? Those familiar with Fusion, you can see we use joints here. Um, that was the way I used to do things in SolidWorks. So that's what I was familiar with. Um, but now any chance I get, I make components. So uh, let's hide these quick. So if you notice in this item, the soft jaw is actually a component of that item. So um, it just makes it a little easier. Everything's in one file. And then as you update this, your cam updates. So let's hide that, jump back over to the cam side. So this is all the design, um, pretty simple idea, concept. All of these holes are actually oversized a little bit just to ensure that my flathead sit flush or slightly recessed. Um, but that was that. So hop over to the cam side. This is what I mean. If you notice this, I've got base, I've got some, right, through the prototyping, some things we cleaned up and fixed. Here's what you're gonna see, and one thing I don't like. So this item, I physically made it. Um, if you can see in some of these stocks, none of them are related to that item. The only one 
I had to, uh, I made some soft jaws so I could fix some holes in the top plate. So if you guys notice, this file only has one body. It's got the fixture um, that I redid everything in the other one, but all of the cam when I did this in the prototype was here. So anytime you do that, it gets a little tricky because now if I need to change anything here, I don't have those cam programs here. Um, so anytime you can do everything in one and have your CAD and cam all part of the same file, I think it's a little safer. That way, if I went through and I can be a thousand percent honest with you all here, I had the whole spacing on the standoff incorrect. Uh, let's hide this. So you can see this hole spacing is correct. When I originally did this, I had these holes spaced the same distance as these. So I went to bolt everything together and yeah, that didn't work. So I originally had these made and then it didn't bolt to the top or the middle piece because, well, I didn't have the hole spacing correct. So if I would have done all this in one file, it would have been correct. All the cam would have updated and it would have been correct from there. So something to think about is if you can have that, uh, they kind of call it parametric, where everything is linked. So um, for instance, if I wanted to edit this, you can drive items. So if I was to put new holes in, I could, you know, kind of go and say, I need them to be this hole spacing. So then because this, these two rings here are the threaded holes below, let's say I wanted to, uh, so what we're gonna do here, sorry, I gotta turn on our sketches. We're just gonna do this for fun, for an example. Let's say instead of counter sinks, I wanted to counter bore. And I wanna pick up those holes. So those holes were driven from those features below. So they're guaranteed to be the correct spacing. And I don't know, for fun, let's just make it some goofy size. Uh, M48, right, that's gonna be giant. Let's do M12s, pretty close in size. So there you can see everything was driven from another feature, or driven, sorry. So it is insured in the correct spot, guaranteed. So that's something I think is a good habit to get into, um, that way, you never have to worry about misaligned holes or anything else, especially when you're dealing with assemblies. Um, that's a safer design. I know different softwares, it's uh, easier to do this a little more. Um, this is how I did it here. I've also done some of this for like stamping dies in other programs, um, but it's just something that's kind of neat um, and what I consider one of those fail safes. So um, you can ensure that everything would be in one file you don't have to go back and forth um, and then everything's here. So sometimes on some programs, I'll pull one up in a second, you'll see things that are linked. So let's pull one up quick. So on this item, I made these covers. This is a different project that we did for a customer. Um, we got some, you know, talent style grips some pit bulls. Um, and then these items I've already done in a different method multiple times. So now I did a palette so I can kind of get more runtime, less attended. Um, but if you notice here in the cam software, if you see this little link, uh, this means it's a linked feature. So let's pull up. So here, so this is the op one. So if we go here, you can see all that. So I always, I have my stocks shown here so you can kind of see it. Oh, let's turn off our tool paths. Okay, tool pads are off. So uh, here, right, you can see that's all machined out, all that. So when I brought these in, the problem is if I go here, right, you can see I've got my program highlighted. Say I said, I want to edit this contour pass and I wanna speed it up. I can't speed it up because these are already programmed in another part file. So. Well, it's awesome, it brought it all in. I can't change anything. So the way I probably would have done this was if I knew I was gonna do these on a palette from the get-go, I probably would have done the everything in one, um, but this is actually all different assemblies. So um, 
The bases were also done here and I can show that quickly for you guys just to get an idea. So you can see the different features. So it might be a little hard to see. Bases on off. Um, but again, I should have done them all in that parametric ideology that everything would have been there. So just something to think about when you're doing some of the design work. Um, so let's close that. So, and then we'll go back here to do active. I also name my files active so I know which one's the most up to date um, because I bounce around a lot um, between job shop work and this, it can get a little confusing. So um, you'll notice here, once I turn everything on, base op one, right? So in the prototype, I had some bigger material. We made it work. Um, so once we go through it all, that's op one. Op two needs to update because I changed something in the original file, but not the end of the world. So it, op one, then we flip it and we did op two. Stock's not loading yet, but you get the idea there where everything is updated there and it would all be in one file. So then when I said, oh, I want to do the angled bracket, I just simply turn this off, turn this back, turn this on. And then here you can see, ooh, upside down, probably helps, right? Roughed it all out, faced the top, did some bore work to the outside, uh, thread milled, and then put a chamfer on those holes. And then we did that corner around. So, and then op two, flipped. Uh, you can see that point that's picked up off on that soft jaw, which we'll show here, All right? Soft jaw. So there you can see I actually updated my point, one being that wall. I mean, because this is all modeled here, I just had to draw the jaw. So here you can see we decked it all off, right? I had this little goofy overlaid, but you know, I know once I face it, it's gone. Drill our holes. We put a little round over on there to give it a little edge break. Um, and then thread milled the holes, broke the edge on those holes, make sure that we're deburring in the machine. So yeah, that's kind of the methodology uh, for this project. Uh, we'll actually go over each individual items cam more specifically, um, and then give you more details on the machining side. So I uh, hope you guys liked this. Uh, this is gonna be a little mini series for American Made where we go through start to finish design to the end product and then show you guys the finished product as well. So I hope you guys liked the design, uh, some of the things we incorporated in the design and some of the things to think about long-term, especially in your uh, CAD system, how you're going to design, how you're gonna incorporate fixturing, different other components. Um, and just some of the things to think about long-term when you're doing a product that is going to rerun and repeat, run production, um, I always tell people production is a little different than one-off. You can usually, or in my case, I always fumble through a one-off part, um, but long-term production, you kind of want to think about how you're going to do this, how you're going to incorporate fixturing, some of your manufacturing methods, and how you are you going to do this uh, the most efficient way uh, moving forward. So. Um, as always guys, like, subscribe to Practical Machinist and stay tuned for the other videos on this mini series. Thank you.